Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll just give uh, a brief outline of some of the experience that uh, we've encountered at the agency I work for, and some examples as well of, of products that we have produced in response to user requests. First of all, just to put it in context, because our name is slightly misleading, we, we neither own nor operate satellites. We are an imagery intelligence uh, center that produces mainly geospatial information and intelligence to support EU Council requirements, with the focus being the Common Foreign Security Policy and the European Security and Defence Policy. Our task's main areas of occupation are as shown there, and you can see that there is quite a lot of dual use overlap between the military and the civilian applications there. And uh, to coin a phrase, it's been used quite often, very often, although the military are not the right people to use in response to disasters, they're often the only ones that can be used. And if you look at the EU involvement, since about 2003, we've been involved in supporting these various operations, around 20. The resources we draw upon are mainly uh, commercial satellite imagery, and if you look at this list, this is not exhaustive, but it is uh, representative of the main sources that we draw upon at the moment. So there's quite a reasonable selection there, but if you look at the next few years, you can see that there is quite a wide range of additional capabilities coming on board. And in addition to those, we will also be drawing upon so-called non-commercial satellites. These are the national systems, usually classified or dual-use, uh, Cosmos SkyMed, for example, civilian and military component. But the others there, Helios, Sarlupe in particular, military satellites that can be used, though, for other applications. So generally speaking, when we um, are facing a disaster or responding to that, these are often the questions that are asked. At times, people just do not necessarily know where the location is uh, when the disaster has come up. They need the orientation products. They need to know the extent of it. Um, how big is the area to be covered? How extensive is the disaster itself? What sort of aid is needed? And this is where geospatial products can give a very useful first impression before you get people out in the field, perhaps. Mapping, very often in these areas, especially in Africa and such like, the mapping can be misleading if indeed it exists at all. Or mapping that is available within member states possibly cannot be used and shared with the responders because of classification issues. So again, Earth observation data can be used as a very quick uh, filling for those cartographic products. Another focus, the infrastructure, what is damaged, what is still usable, and this was very much the case with the Musafarabad Pakistan earthquake, where we had to assess the roads and bridges so we could see how aid could be delivered. And then the last one, and this comes up quite often, the problem, the products need to be current, but they need to be usable for the people in the field, and they need to be shareable because very often the response is coalition-based and you need to be able to make sure that all participants have access to all of the data. Other areas, what is needed? Um, you can imagine that uh, it can take perhaps 10 minutes, half an hour, to produce an image and a couple of annotations, but it may take weeks or longer to produce a very detailed GIS. You need to know where to pitch your response. What does the user require? There's no point spending three months giving them a product that's too late and too detailed. Interoperability. You need to make sure, especially with soft copy products, that people can use them, transfer those data, and that you don't find that it's a useless product that you've given because they cannot read it. Communications, and this was one point that was made to me particularly by a UN colleague. He said, don't make the assumption that uh, you can just send something to me on the internet, because very often I don't have access to internet. And by the way, most of the time I don't have access to electricity. 
one that um, is perhaps more relevant for us, the uncleared aspect, that's whether or not people can have access to classified products. Very often you may have a classified product, GIS, that could be of use, and we then have to see how that can be downgraded to be issued if, if possible. And then, of course, <clears throat> as well as uh, making sure people can use the products with the training, you need also to be sure that you don't unnecessarily duplicate. You can't eliminate duplication. There is going to be an element of that, inevitably, but it's to reduce it to the minimum. And again, making sure that the products can be shared. So just some brief examples. This was one that we were called upon to produce. Uh, the task came in on a Thursday evening with one of the member states sending an aid mission on the Monday afternoon. So we had to give a, a quick initial um, assessment of the extent of the damage within the area. And our focus here was identifying the main areas of the landslides how they had affected the lines of communication, primarily the roads, and which bridges were intact, which were still, uh, which had been destroyed. I've mentioned the Congo, and this was one of the larger operations that we did, supporting the UN and the election process, so crisis management. Uh, although it was a benign operation, it could have been uh, quite different very large area, mapping very much out of date or non-existent. So we were called upon to produce image maps for that. To do classifications, because of the, uh, the difficulty of the cross-country mobility there, this was particularly required by the UN forces, and also the infrastructure, because many of the movements would have to be done by air, because of the uh, nature of the land and the distances involved. And our current one focus here very much on the Chad Central African Republic, where the EU has uh, elements in there. And we're working very closely with France as the lead nation in producing geospatial information and mapping. So uh, it's very much a collaborative effort there on that side. And these are typical of the products, showing the operating area that the personnel will be attached to the town's refugee camps. And then the follow-up to that is assessing the movements of personnel and also possible warring factions in the area. So forewarning those involved in the crisis management. Products, and this is one example of dual use, although we are making use of classified imagery from Helios, we are able to release um, the mapping products that have been produced from that at unclassified level because it's important for the operation again that the UN elements and possibly NGOs can get access to those products. The last line, the um, imagery assessments, of course they remain as uh, classified products so the dissemination is more limited. So just to, to summarize, although our focus is mainly on foreign and security policy and defense issues. It is very much a dual use, the type of product we produce. It's um, a good, timely vehicle for getting information to first responders. Collaboration, as in the case for Chad with the French, with the Congo, where we had a, a very close collaboration with the United Nations, is a very effective way of making maximum use of your resources and uh, communications, often the, the weak point there, getting the data to the people that need it in the field as quickly as possible. But you can guarantee, really, that commercial satellite imagery is making a very, very valuable contribution in this field. So, thank you very much.